Hey guys and girls, on this video I'm going to be talking about the third season, sorry, the third episode of the second season of The X-Files. The episode is called Blood, so I will be going into spoilers from the start in case you haven't seen this one. And it's directed by the ever-reliable David Nutter, and the story comes from um, Durin Morgan, who significant because he actually guest starred in last week's episode as the monster of the week so that's quite the turnaround from monster to writer of this episode or at least the story guy and this episode got 14.8 roughly million viewers at the time according to the good old Nelson ratings which again is a bit of a drop from the previous week and I think the next episode might be a bit down again and maybe that suggests then the viewers were starting to tune out a bit because of the lack of Mulder and Scully because of the writers obviously working around Gillian Anderson's pregnancy and in this episode, the first half at least, you don't get a lot of Scully. You can tell that they're sort of working around that. There's even like these sort of like montage type scenes where you see her just like reading Mulder's reports and sort of has like the odd line, but it's not like a fully, you know, acting type performance. And then it's more in the second half where she's she actually comes into it more and is working with Mulder. But possibly, yeah, the ratings slip a bit are slipping a bit at this stage because of that. But anyway, the the plot of the episode is that it's to do with subliminal messaging because at the start of the episode, this guy Ed who's played by William Sanderson. People know him from Blade Runner, amongst other things. One of those quite familiar character actors. Well, he plays like this sort of quite lonely postal worker who at the start of the episode is let go by his boss. He's told, hey, you do a good job, you're a good guy, we all like you, but cutbacks and that, we're going to have to let you go, that old chestnut. And I did find it funny because the boss says that the boys had like a whip round for your head and here you go, 100 bucks. And to me, for a whip round for someone who they value as an employee and, you know, we're, we're going to help you out, it, 100 doesn't sound that much to me. But, you know, it was the early 90s, so, so maybe at that time it would be seen as more. But in any case, he, he gets let go and... As soon as this happens, he starts seeing like these messages, which is kind of telling him, you know, such messages as, as like kill them all, you know, that sort of messaging. And from that moment, the episode sort of follows him as he as he has seemingly a fear of blood. That's obviously where the episode title comes from, and he becomes more paranoid and unhinged as the episode goes along. But we also see two other examples of this. So we see a woman who has a fear of like being alone with like sort of suspicious or unknown men and, and very paranoid about them potentially going after her and maybe sexually assaulting her and she kind of snaps as a result of that and then there's another fear um this man to do with oxygen so we see him actually post credit he's in a lift with a bunch of other employees and the message is kind of the message that he sees is kind of saying not enough oxygen kill them all that that sort of thing so the idea is that this sort of plays on their fears and sort of sparks them off and and obviously as the episode goes along we start to see why that they're seeing these subliminal messages and, and there's quite a a smart little swerve actually where at first it looks like it's going to be connected to like this this bug source spray which like the local authority has been spraying on on like 
plants um, to to basically make sure the crops are un, aren't affected. But it turns out there may be side effects for the people in the surrounding areas. And it goes into the whole um, LSD type angle. But that's partly a swerve. It, it turns out not really to be that. But So just talking about the episode. It's another solid episode. I, I think it has two problems the first problem is the lack of Scully. I think those scenes, as I said, it does stand out early on and it's kind of cutting around her and you're not getting the full on Scully really. It's it's sort of stronger in the second half when you have more of her and Mulder like playing off each other and you actually get the partnership then. The other problem is, I think as it goes on and you get more of these set pieces, I think it does kind of feel a bit generic. It's this interesting sort of thing where the actual setup and the idea is is quite good, and actually some of the stuff to do with the the bug spray and that and the local politics I found quite interesting. But the problem is. As you follow Ed and you get these various like scenarios and it oh after a while it just feels a little bit on the nose and it just feels like it's trying a bit too hard and certain scenes do feel quite generic, even though the direction is it's generally good because it's David Nutter. He he knows what he's doing. Um s- s- there's a couple of clunky lines, but scene of the episode is definitely the scene in, in the garage with the woman, where you have this guy, the mechanic, who she's paranoid about, and ultimately she ends up killing him, but it starts off with him in like a cigarette, and she can't really see his face properly, and, and he keeps asking her to like come, come and have a look at this, and... She's trying to to get out of there as soon as possible. And what's so great about the scene is, first of all, it keeps you guessing who's going to be the killer, essentially, because you might naturally think it's going to be him attacking her. So that's quite clever. The other clever thing is then it feels totally authentic. I mean, apart from the fact that you've got the gimmick of the episode which ultimately makes her snap and kill the guy at least it sort of feels quite relatable or it feels realistic than this woman would have this fear of kind of unknown men and men who unless she knows any better can be quite creepy and I think I, I, I don't want to presume too much here being a man and all but from what I sort of know about these things, is it's the sort of natural fear that that some women do have about, you know, men in darkened rooms, men they don't know, and just the sense of they're always being watched and what have you. I think that's probably a fair thing to say. And because of that, the scene sort of works on two levels. It works on, like, the natural fear factor and probably to some women being quite relatable level it also as i said keeps you guessing but it also works really well for the gimmick of the episode so so that was good the woman was good as well the actress i thought she did a good job in conveying that fear and mostly this is a functional episode there's some nice little touches i quite like actually the local cop the one who is kind of Mulder's point of contact at the crime scenes who we actually see more of in the episode he's a solid supporting character he's a decent comes across as a decent grounded guy who's um very fair very honest and actually does back Mulder up when when he has this suspicion of um you know the bug spray causing all this and he actually wants answers himself so he's a likable sort of believable sort of guy and 
there's a speech he does about a small town and the fact that in general the the town has very very few murders very few like severe crimes and that the three that have happened in whatever the small period is is like the most we've (laughs) we've had in yeah ages and that you know it's sort of the equivalent of like a much bigger sort of place really but I I thought with his monologue he actually did a good job in selling that side of the story there's a good cameo as well from the lone gunman they make a welcome return and we see Frederick's crush on Scully develop even more and there's some great banter with them and Mulder like Mulder says at one point Frederickly you give perversion a bad name which is a great line Mulder's on pretty sharp form in this episode with some of his one liners like there's a line where the the cop sort of walks out the room after Mulder's theory and Mulder says yeah, I bet he's one of these who who still believes that Elvis is dead, which, which is great. So there's some good stuff from Mulder in this episode, and it's a very solid episode. I think there's just a couple of, like things that that just don't that dr- just drag it down a bit, and it's never going to be a classic. It's never going to be one I'm going to return to that often, but it's it's really solid for what it is. I think also, just speaking of some of the more generic scenes, there's a scene with Ed in like a department store where he's trying to like like this this woman is trying to sign sign him up for to donate blood, and that obviously comes back into it with his fear of blood but I think after he's he's kind of it's either before or after he's like walked away from her he suddenly like there's TVs in the middle of the store and they all light up with this stuff to do you've got imagery of like Rodney King and like Charles Manson and and just a just stuff like that I thought was was a bit over the top and on the nose and kind of generic I think that's the sort of stuff they should have dialed down on it's like yeah we get it but but you're being a bit over the top here um but no it's 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 mostly a good episode I I think when I was thinking about this I wasn't sure if I was going to go that high I think looking at it I, I it's probably stronger than i was originally gonna say so i'll give it seven out of ten i think it's better than last week's episode i i still prefer the first episode of this season to this one i would say that was stronger overall um but this is around about the same sort of area so seven out of ten is where i'll lead it's just not a classic but it's 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 solid and, and good enough. Um, so, yeah, it. that's blood. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. Share me out on social media to, to help get more attention on the channel and on the videos. And next week I will be doing Sleepless, which is an episode I have really fond memories of. It it, it guest stars one Tony Todd Candyman himself, so very excited to re-watch that. In fact, I'm planning on doing it on a stream, watching it on a live stream. So look out for that, Sleepless, the next episode. So I'm expecting good things from that. Another thing to look out for on the channel is that coming up this weekend, me and my new co-host, Rachel, my new horror co-host, we're going to be doing the whole Fear Street trilogy. So the new horror trilogy on Netflix, which concludes this Friday. So you can look out for me and Rachel doing the trilogy on one video coming up this weekend so more great stuff well hopefully great stuff to look for thanks for listening guys see you again soon